Hi, this is Chuck. And this is Karen. And this is our show. What if it really works? And Karen, <laughs> we have this beautiful woman in front of us. Who is this? This is Dr. Gladys McGarry, and I am so thrilled to have her here with us today. We've been knowing about you and hearing about you from every direction <laughs> all of our adult life. So it's really nice to, to be able to Thank have you. you join us today. She is the founding member and past president of the American Holistic Medical Association, past president of the Arizona Board of Homeopathic Medical Examiners, member of the board of directors of the American Board of Holistic Medicine, a family physician for 58 years. It's longer than that. Now. <laughs> currently consulting with patients on the topic of living medicine. She has received so many awards for the work that she has done in her life. And probably the greatest gift she has ever been is the work that she has done with all the children and the parents of children working with them. It's a Thank blessing you. to this planet. It's been my blessing. Yeah. yeah. I've been truly blessed. We are so happy. So we're... <laughs> Thank we, you. We're just... We can hardly wait. <laughs> We've been excited ever since we heard you were coming. Oh, There's no good. sense of waiting any further. Tell us, what does it mean to found the concept of holistic medicine? It's... It's so profound that it, it just, um, well, may I back up? Absolutely. <clears throat> I was born and raised in India. My parents were medical missionaries in India. So the concept, they, they went there with a mission as far as medicine and uh, their church was concerned, not so much the church, but the concepts of love and compassion. So I grew up with that. So I came into this world. I knew when I was two that I needed to be a doctor. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew it had to happen. So when I came into the world, I came in with a mission, which I didn't know. So as I went through, got into medical school, and I married, and we got in, Bill and I got interested in the Edgar Casey material. It's that that led us straight into the field of... Um, alternative healing, possibly. The, the terms are very um, movable as far as healing is concerned. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we, we did get interested in this, and then we began to realize that what we were being taught in medical school was really not what we really wanted to practice. And we began thinking, we have to look at this in another way. There has to be the other dimension that really went into medicine for. And so we got together with five other, well, other, there were five of us who started the American Holistic Medical Association. And that was in 1977. But we'd already been working with this for a long time before that. So you ask me a, a broad question like that, and I get into this involved process because it's been going on for so many years and it involves so much in the way of, of um, basic human philo philosophical concepts. So, so one, of the, one of the things you said right at the very beginning was uh, about the, your introduction, association, and information from Edward, Edgar Casey. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that we observe about current day modern Austin, Texas medicine is that there's kind of like a wall on the doctor's side where it's real hard to get past that anything other than the physical matter reality that they're used to dealing with. What was it like when you found Edward Casey? Well, Hewlett, we met Hewlett Casey first. And for <clears throat> years he would say to my, my Bill and me, Bill McGarry, why don't you guys do something with the Edgar Case of medical work? And we'd say, look, Hulene, your dad was psychic. He saw all these things. We're not psychic. We can't do anything. So he'd go away. The next year, he'd come back, and he'd say, why don't you guys do something with this material, this medical work? And we'd say, Hulene, your dad was psychic. We, and we'd go through this whole thing. And this went on for a period of years until we got it that what Edgar Casey was talking about was not diseases, he was talking about people. And when you focus on diseases and healing diseases, 
you completely miss the fact that what you're really working with is people. And so we then realized that it wasn't the modalities, which are still a lot of people interested in the Casey material are more interested in the modalities that are, can be used. It was a fact that each individual person had their own particular disease process, which wasn't the same as another person's process. It was t named the same, but it wasn't the same. So at that point, we began to realize that there was a, a big difference in what was really healing and what was curing. Because I've watched beautiful jobs of healing that don't, uh, of surgery that haven't healed. I've watched beautiful, botched up jobs of surgery that healed very well. So the question is, who's doing the healing? This dilemma was something that we were working with all the time. And my oldest son is an orthopedic surgeon. He's a retired orthopedic surgeon uh, out of Portland. And when he had finished his training, he came through Phoenix and he said to, to us, he said, you know, he said, Mom, I'm really scared. I'm going to go into the world. I'm going to have people's lives in my hands. I don't know if I can handle that. And I said to him, well, Carl, if you think you're the one that does the healing, you have a right to be scared. <laughs> but if you can understand that it's your job to do your job with the, your, that you've been trained to do and then support the patient while they do their own healing, you never have nothing to be afraid of. Now, with that kind of an attitude, sometimes at that point people listened to us and sometimes they didn't. But I remember being waiting for one of my ladies to have a baby one time at a doctor's hospital. It must have been in the early 70s. <clears throat> and a colleague of mine was waiting for his lady to deliver too, and we got to talking. And at that time, he said to me, you know, the problem with medicine is that the fun has all gone out of medicine. This is in the 70s when he was already talking about that. And I pondered that for years. I, I thought, you know, he's right, but why has the fun gone out of medicine? And after years of being of working in the area of holistic medicine and working with different things, it dawned on me that all that we were taught, all that we worked with, was killing. We were taught to kill bacteria, eradicate AIDS, eliminate diabetes. The language that we were taught and is still being taught in medical school it's against life itself. It's antibiotics, anti-convulsants. The one that really gets me is the anti-aging thing. I mean, come on, what are we supposed to do? You know? <laughs> Incidentally, I don't I think I just got this the other day that wrinkles don't hurt at all until until people begin messing with them. <laughs> you know?